The OnePlus 10R and the Realme GT Neo 3 share a pretty identical spec sheet. They also happen to be priced pretty similarly. So what are the differences between these two? Which is the better choice to go with? Let's find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C40 Tech and if you do end up liking what you see, thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's get started. First, let's start with the built-in design. The OnePlus 10R, it's been receiving a lot of flack for its build. Now what do you think? Is it that bad? Do you think this is bad enough to be a deal breaker? I mean, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Me personally, I feel the reception has been a little too harsh. Uh, the 10R, I don't think it's as bad as people are making it out to be. Especially this green variant, we have a matte plastic back with these stripes to one side which makes it instantly recognizable and in a way also looks nice. I'm generally not a fan of boxy finishes, but OnePlus has done well in making the 10R feel nice in hand. At about 185 grams of weight, it feels easy to wield. Now while I do feel that all hate OnePlus has been receiving is a little overblown, it doesn't mean there isn't any truth to it. The 9R, for example, had a glass back with a metal frame which both have been omitted here. The alert slider, the last remnant from the OnePlus we've all come to know and love, that's also missing here. The fact that the newer, less expensive Nord 2T has a glass back and an alert slider makes these omissions quite questionable. And for these reasons, I'd say Realme does have a better built-in design. For a phone price in this segment, a glass back is expected and Realme provides you just that. The racing stripe to the back also makes the GT Neo 3 even more instantly recognizable. This white variant in particular, it looks really awesome. The blue is okay too and the black which doesn't have these racing stripes, that I'm not a fan of. Just personal preference though. Now if you just looked at the spec sheet, you'd notice both phones have the same thickness, 8.2 millimeters, but when you actually see them or hold them, it feels like the GT Neo 3 is slimmer. Now that's because the back kind of curves inwards, so when you grip the phone, it feels easier on the hands. This is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of boxy designs. Despite sporting the same size displays and offering pretty much the same innards as the 10R, but also having a glass pack, the GT Neo 3 is heavier by only a few grams. So with built-in design, yes, the 10R is a downgrade on its predecessor, but no, it's not the worst design ever. It's about fine, but the GT Neo 3 is far, far better in terms of both quality of materials used and the ergonomics. Now before we proceed, a quick shout out to our video sponsor, INEO. INEO is a brand that's been building excellent handheld consoles, basically full-blown PCs fit into the handheld form factor. Now, I've spent a lot of time with this, their latest INEO Next, and it's been one of the best handled experiences I've had. Somehow, they've managed to nail ergonomics, and can you believe this one's powered by an actual AMD Ryzen 7, the 5825. Coupled with that excellent hall sensor analog sticks and triggers, the experience is phenomenal. If you're into handled gaming, you should check out the INEO Next. I'll leave a link to their Indiegogo in the comments below. Coming back, the displays are identical. We have 6.7 inch AMOLED panels on both covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass 5. The resolution, the refresh, the brightness, exactly the same. They're both beautiful, high quality, high refresh panels with nothing between them. Even the cons are identical. For example, while both phones support HDR content, neither can do HDR on Netflix. With audio, both phones offer stereo setups that are equally loud. The GT Neo 3 is a little richer with the sound though. Next up, let's talk specs. It's again pretty similar with just one difference. The RAM is 8 or 12 gigs LPDDR5. The storage is 128 or 256 gigs UFS 3.1. The SoC, this is the difference. The 10R has a slight edge. Well, the GT Neo 3 is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 8100 SoC. The 10R has the 8100 Max, which for all intents and purposes is the same 5 nanometer chip, but the GPU, it's clocked a little higher. When you look at CPU intensive benchmarks like Geekbench, the scores are very close and weirdly the Neo 3 even pulls ahead at times. With throttle tests, both phones handle it more or less equally. With GPU scores, the 8100 Max on the OnePlus 10R as promised does deliver better numbers. The stability again, it remains pretty close. So maybe with the OnePlus 10R, gaming performance could be ever so slightly better. But with battery life, the GT Neo 3 has an edge. If you see here at the end of that 20 loop wildlife stress test on 3D Mark, both phones were on performance mode by the way, OnePlus has dropped 6% while Realme has only dropped 4 With actual day-to-day -day use, I'd say Realme fares about 10% better. 
Now both phones offer two options. You can either get the 4500 milliamp hour battery with a 150 watt charger or a 5000 milliamp hour battery with an 80 watt charger. While it might be tempting to rush out and get the 150 watt version for the 18 minutes 0 to 100 that both brands claim, I would recommend against it. I'd say take the higher capacity battery. It's not like 80 watts is slow. Even iPhones and Samsung flagships, they top out at much lower wattage as hell. There are full blown laptops that max out at 65. So full charge in about 30 minutes with these 80 watt chargers, it's still pretty darn impressive. Guys, here's the truth. Say you go with the 5000 milliamp hour 80 watt combo with either phone, at best there might be one or two days a year where you're in a hurry and you need a charge really, really quick. Maybe those two days you're gonna regret it, think, man, I should have bought the 150 watt version. But that extra 500 mAh, now that's something you're gonna appreciate on every one of the other 363 days. Anyways, moving on with software, this is the first round where OnePlus scores a comprehensive win. Both phones run on Android 12 with their custom interfaces on top, Oxygen OS on the OnePlus, Realme UI on the GT Neo 3. Since both Oxygen OS and Realme UI share a code base with Color OS, a lot of functionality is very similar. Of course, Oxygen OS does have some of its own features like shelf and zen mode. The actual reason why OnePlus gets a win here is not that. Rather, the fact that OnePlus promises uh, three major Android updates plus four years of security patches for the 10R compared to two years of Android updates and three years of security patches on the Neo 3. Uh, also, the fact that OnePlus comes with far few preloaded apps and ads, that helps. Anyways, with that said and done, let's move on to cameras and no surprises, both of them have again, exact same identical hardware. The primary is a 50 megapixel Sony IMX766. It's paired with an optically stabilized f1.88 lens. Though the hardware and the ISPs are identical, the way these brands handle the processing, that differs. Here I feel OnePlus does a little better with images being a tad brighter. The detail levels and everything else, more or less the same. Under low light, the differences are even lesser. To be honest, with the primaries barring that very slight difference under good light, there's really nothing. The secondary is an 8 megapixel ultra wide. Once again, images shot with the Realme have a more contrasty vibe. OnePlus is a tad better. The third sensor is our 2 megapixel macro, is not much to talk about there. With video, it's supposed to be advantage Realme given the Neo 3 can shoot 4K 60 while the 10R is limited to 4K 30, but neither phone offers any stabilization at 4K, meaning you're gonna have to settle for 1080 more often than not. And at 1080, the performance is, no surprises, about the same. With selfies, we still continue with the identical hardware bit, 16 megapixel f2.8 on both, and I feel the Realme does a tad better with skin tones, rest quite similar. Anyways, let's now move on and talk about price. Both phones are officially priced very close to each other. If you look at the starting prices, the GT Neo 3 is priced 2000 rupees cheaper, but then again, if you take the current Insta discounts into account, 3000 on the Realme, 2000 on the OnePlus, the gap widens to 3000 rupees. So what do you get for that extra 3000? Well, you do get slightly better images with cameras, you get fewer preloaded apps, less ad intrusions, and most importantly, an extra year of software updates and security patches. Now with the GT Neo 3, you'd get a little improved battery life, a build that arguably looks and feels better with more premium glass, slightly better sound output, and selfie cameras. Now cutting out the slight theoretical advantages, since they aren't things you're gonna notice unless you're pitting them side by side, you know, head to head and comparing them, the conclusion is pretty simple. If you want that extra year of software updates and feel paying 3000 rupees more for that is justifiable, then the OnePlus 10R might be worth it for you. But for the vast majority of users, the better build, the extra battery life, despite the lower price tag, that should be the right choice. Realme has done very well with the GT Neo 3 and that is my take on these two phones. Do you agree with my conclusion here or do you have a different take on it? Let me know in the comments below. And also, while you're down there, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for your time, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 ETech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.